What's going on guys? Today I want to address the popular question of weighted pull-ups and back development. I've had a number of you guys ask me, Alex, how come I have a very strong weighted pull-up, yet my back is not that wide? It's not that thick, nor does it resemble yours. So can you give me some advice regarding this topic? So thank you for asking me this question. Allow me to help you out. So the first thing you need to understand is that genetics play a major role in building your back, right? In particular, it's going to be torso length, lat insertion, and then there's arm uh, dominance and torso dominance. Then there's the leverages as well to consider and the fact that some guys just need to get really, really strong to get really, really big. It's kind of similar to how I can bench in the high threes, yet I only have 16 and a half inch arms. Yet you got other guys that are benching the low twos and they got 18s, right? So it's the same thing with the back. Some guys, they get a very strong way to pull up and it just doesn't give them a back because they need to get very, very strong on this lift. It's just a genetic thing. They're probably torso dominant because of the way their build is. It just happens, you know? And then some guys, they actually do have a lot of muscle mass. They have really good lat strength and development, but because of their insertion point, they have the high lats going on and they have long torsos, which makes them look lankier. It makes their width look less apparent. But I can assure you that if you take a measuring tape and you put it around the guy's body, um, you'll find that in the majority of cases, he's pretty damn wide. So it's usually just an illusion that's giving you this effect here, right? So that's the first thing you have to consider. Genetics, major, major factor. The second thing you must consider is your body weight. What I have personally observed over many, many years is that guys who tend to weigh very little see the shittiest back gains from weighted pull-ups. Why? Because total weight is not a lot, right? See, if you're 140 pounds and you're repping 100 on the weighted pull-up, well, that's only 240 pounds total, right? And oftentimes, that's usually a relative strength advantage. It's similar to how you have guys like Richard Hawthorne, right, who are doing these crazy, crazy numbers on the deadlift. It's definitely not the same as Eddie Hall, but if we look at it from a pound for pound perspective, it is definitely superior in that regard. So the relative strength is misguiding people. They're saying, okay, I'm doing this bodyweight lift, therefore I should be really, really big. But I would say that the biggest indicator of lat growth when doing the weight to pull up is gonna be the total weight, not the relative strength aspect, okay? And that's why you see all these guys, they're literally 140 pounds. They're 140 guys, and some of them are average height. They're not that big. And another thing too, right? If you're 140, how muscular do you think you're going to be in the first place? If you're 140, you probably have uh, a lack of muscle in all kinds of areas. You know, your, your chest, your arms, your legs. I mean, to me, a 140 guy, very, very, very high chance that he's not muscular in the first place. So why would you assume that your back is going to be big, right? That's like saying, okay, I'm going to be 140 pounds with 18 inch arms. I really doubt it. Uh, fact of the matter is that you're probably lacking muscle in all kinds of other places. The only exception I can see to this rule is if you're really, really shredded and you're a short motherfucker. If you're like five foot two, man, and you're 140 shredded, then yes, I can understand. And that would explain why a lot of gymnasts are jacked. You know, they're short and they're shredded, which gives them the appearance. But usually I have found that guys who don't weigh a lot, they get the worst gains from weighted pull-ups. Whereas the heavyweights, when we see guys that are actually heavy, people weighing in the 200s and they're repping out these serious numbers, over 100 pounds in the weighted uh, pull-up, that's when we see the best bad gain. So you have to assess your body weight. Are you just a skinny guy who's doing these heavy pull-ups because you have good leverages and you have short arms and all this stuff? Or are you an actual heavyweight that's doing these pull-ups? What I found is that nine out of 10 times, all the guys who are really, really heavy doing this stuff get great results. And that's gonna bring me on to my next point. In the case that you actually are a fatter guy, right? You're in the high 200s, mid 200s, low 200s, and you still don't have a big back from pull-ups. My assumption is that your waist is too large. You see, it's not your back that's lagging, all right? I can prove it to you. Get a measuring tape, measure the circumference. I bet your, your circumference is easily over 56 inches. I'll put money on it. You see, the problem is that your waist is too large. You probably have a waist that is like over 35 inches. The result is that your shoulder to waist ratio is a bit distorted and that makes your lats look less wide, all right? So it's not that you have a small back. It's not that your lats are like puny. It's that your waist is too large, okay? But I can assure you that if you measure the actual, the upper circumference of your body, you're going to have a really big measurement. So what you have to do in that case, if you are this fatter guy doing these heavy weighted pull-ups, you need to cut down a little bit, right? You need to cut down to at least 15 to 20% body fat, trim that waist a little bit, maybe even get lean. And then you're going to see the lat development that you already have. All right. I had a guy tell me that he's 205 and he's doing 90 pound uh, weighted chin ups for reps, you know? And he said that his lats don't look that big. See, I call bullshit. I believe that you do have big lats. It's just that your waist is too large, which makes it hide it. Like, I'll give an example. Myself, I've been bulking, so uh, fuck. I've been looking a lot more fat. My waist, biggest has ever been in my life, right? And I can tell you that when I wear a shirt, I do look a little bit less wide, I'm not gonna lie, uh, be because of the fact that my waist got thicker, 
you know? So if I trim down a little bit, if I get a sub 30 inch waist, then obviously the shoulder to waist ratio will be accentuated. Right now, what you're, what you're having is that strong man effect. You're having that bolder, like that stacked appearance, you know? It's the Louis C effect, if you will, where you got the big waist and the big back. I would also call it uh, the Paul Carter effect. Before Paul Carter did his cut, that's exactly what he had going on. So my advice for all you heavy guys that are doing these crazy numbers on the way to chin up, cut down. Cut down, get that waist a little bit more trim, and all of a sudden you're gonna see the lats that you already have. Trust me, you already have it, all right? And then the final point in this video that I like to reference is the fact that for some of you guys, the weighted chin up is simply not going to be enough. Uh, just like for guys like myself, just doing the close grip bench is not gonna be enough for arms. Uh, because of genetics and a bunch of other factors, and just the lift in general, I think you're gonna be missing out tremendously. In particular, the weighted pull up, in my honest opinion, regardless of the variation you're using, does not optimally hit uh, the upper traps, the upper back, as well as the spinal rectors. You're gonna have lagging spinal rectors if you just do weighted pull-ups, plain and simple. So I believe that if you wanna really refine your back, you need to include more than just vertical pulls. You need to treat your body as a complete unit and include a variety of different movement patterns, right? In particular, I strongly believe that you need at least one heavy pull in your program, whether it be a deadlift, such as snatch grip deadlift, conventional deadlift, um, trap bar deadlift, high handle, low handle, whatever. You need a deadlift variation to really work on the back thickness. It's also gonna ensure optimal spinal rector development. I don't care which one you're doing. If you're doing a heavy pull, your spinal rectors are gonna be really developed to a nice extent, right? You also need to do, incorporate a row of some type. You see, a lot of guys do calisthenics or just weighted pull-ups in general, they don't row. They literally don't row. The only rows I see them doing is on gymnastic rings. They'll do levers and then they'll do rows. That's one variation, but I'm talking about grabbing a barbell and rowing. You know, doing a barbell row, a, a Yates row, a T-bar row, a dumbbell row, whatever you wanna do incorporate some rows, man. If you have this very strong way to pull up, but your row is like in the 200s, there's a problem. I say get your row to at least 275 to 315, and then you're gonna see a great improvement in your back, especially in the thickness. The upper back thickness is where it's at. Rows is gonna develop all that shit, right? And then also you need to incorporate some shrugs, man. Work those upper trapezius muscles, man. Shrug, shrug your ass off. It's also gonna thicken the upper back. You know, you can do them behind the back if you want a bit more uh, mid to lower traps. But you want to shrug as well, man. You can do dumbbells, barbells, whatever you want. I personally like the power shrug, but you can do what you like, right? A lot of guys just do pull-ups. They don't get big traps from doing it, right? Except those who have good genetics where they do a lot of ring stuff to go with it. And then the final thing, do your neck work, guys. In particular, neck extensions. The neck, you know, is directly next to the traps. And if you do neck extension, it's also going to work the upper traps. And it's going to really add to that mountainous 3D pop. See, it's all a system. You can't just rely on one movement. That's why I'm not a fan of minimalist programs. Minimalist programs will give you minimalist results. You can't just do the compound movement to build your arms. You can't just do the one compound lift to build the entire part of your back. You have to incorporate different variations. And the same thing for the fucking pull-up itself. Do underhand, neutral, wide grip. Mix it up, all right? But that's the biggest culprit right there. Don't just rely on the pull-up. It's a great lift. It's time-tested. It is fantastic. But I suggest that you incorporate uh, a pull of some type, a row, a shrug, and then neck extensions, man. You do that shit, back is going to be fully developed from all the way to the upper traps to uh, the lower back. So that's it for today's video. Uh, the eighth airplane of the day has just passed by in the last, uh, let's see, 10 minutes. So fuck you airplane as always. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this segment guys. Try out this advice and I think you're really gonna see major improvements in your uh, back development. So that's it. I'll talk to you all next time. Right after this airplane passes, it's literally, I, I don't understand. It's Saturday today. And there's been four airplanes in the last two minutes. Four airplanes in two minutes. Is this International Airplane Day? Th think about what this is doing to the fucking environment. You know, I bet these are all hippies. Or they they, they want to fucking save the world. They're doing all these goddamn uh, trips and stuff. Like, what the fuck? Why Saturday afternoon? Why are there so many fucking airplanes? Holy shit. Airplane numero five. And this one's really close. Holy shit. This is very, very, very close, guys. Very, very close. Holy fucking shit. It's loud too. Airplane numero 6. Alright. La sixième aujourd'hui. L'avion numero 7 aujourd'hui.